1 Corinthians, and we'll be reading this morning from the 6th chapter, verses 12 through 20. So let us attend to God's word for us this morning. I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. You say food for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy them both. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said the two will become one flesh, but whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you please pray with me? Holy God, may the words of my mouth May the meditations of all of our hearts and our minds, may it all be acceptable to you. For you are our rock, you are our salvation. Amen. So tomorrow is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. It is a day that we have set aside as a nation to remember and honor this man and his work as he fought for civil rights for all Americans. Martin Luther King, uh, he, well, he was a lawbreaker. Martin Luther King broke laws in the states in which he resided because those laws were unjust. But Martin Luther King, as not just another civic organizer, or activist, but Martin Luther King as a pastor, as a devoted Christian, believed that, that in going against unjust laws, you had to do so nonviolently, never taking up arms or even making a fist at those who opposed you. And he believed that you had to accept the consequences of breaking the law. You see, Martin Luther King thought that, that what he was doing was not at all dishonoring the law by breaking unjust laws. In fact, he was providing greater honor, more respect to the law than if he had simply gone along with something unjust. He believed that there were higher laws than just the laws enacted by human beings. And that in accepting the consequences of breaking the law, others would see and recognize that the law was in fact unjust and things would change. Martin Luther King was seen as a lawbreaker. But he was actually following in the footsteps of Jesus. The Pharisees in Jesus' time, they were, they were those who took the law very literally, who looked at it uh, precisely following the letter of the law to the best of their ability and encouraging others, well, demanding of others that they do so too. They looked at the letter of the law thinking that if they could perfectly fulfill the letter of the law, and encourage others to do so that all of Israel, in following God's law perfectly, would then bring about the coming of the Messiah and the salvation of Israel from her enemies. 
The thing was that in following the letter of the law, they often miss the spirit of it. You see, the Pharisees thought that following the letter of the law was more important than treating others well. And so they looked down on those who didn't follow in their footsteps. And they derided and shamed those who failed at the law. Whether those were tax collectors or sinners or prostitutes, they were determined to keep themselves clean no matter what it might do to others. And Jesus wasn't willing to do that. You see, Jesus knew not only the letter of the law, but he knew the spirit behind it. That God had given the law for our good. And so Jesus, while not breaking God's law, went against the, the rules that human beings had put up in their interpretation of God's law. And so Jesus would, would eat foods that others would not eat. He would eat with unclean hands. Jesus would touch sinners, lepers, prostitutes. Jesus would, would heal on the Sabbath and do good to others no matter what day of the week it was. And many saw that as, as scandalous and going against the law. But Jesus knew that we have freedom in God's law rather than being slaves to it. And so when Paul went out to teach about Jesus and to spread the gospel, he told people that, that we are not slaves of the law, we are free because of Jesus. That it is not adherence to the law that saves us, but we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And so we didn't have to worry, those coming into the church as Gentiles, they didn't have to worry about being circumcised or eating all the right foods or doing all the right things, but simply trusting in Jesus. And yet there were those in places like Corinth who heard that message of the freedom we have in Christ. And because they were used to thinking in terms of the letter of the law, they decided it didn't apply at all and just tossed it out. They decided that their, their freedom in Christ meant they could do whatever they wanted. And so Paul, in writing to them, is, is addressing that. He is trying to clarify what it was that he taught them. And so he tells them in response to their statement that I have the right to do anything, he says, well, yes, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything they say. And he says, well, are you going to be mastered by what you have the right to do? G.K. Chesterton echoed these words when he said that having the right to do something is not the same as being right in doing it. That's something we've had to wrestle with here and now, in this time of a pandemic, in a time when, when rules have been put in place about social distancing and wearing masks and not meeting in large groups. And here in our state, the governor has recognized that to, to tell churches that they can't meet and that they have to follow these rules may well be a violation of the First Amendment and the freedom of religion that we have. And so because we as churches will not be punished if we violate these rules, it is, it is easy to say, well, we have the right to meet. We have the right to gather together and to, and to worship just the way we used to, to sing and to have fellowship and, and do everything we were doing before the pandemic. We have the right to do anything, we say. But Paul reminds us that not everything is beneficial. Sometimes when we exert our rights, 
we do so at the expense of others. And there have been churches throughout the nation who have insisted on their rights and it has resulted in super spreader events. Being more concerned about our rights than on the effects of our actions. Paul wants us to understand how it is that we are to follow God's law without being slaves to it. How our freedom in Christ is expressed, and he does so using sexuality as an example. He says to the the Corinthians, I'm not going to be mastered by anything, including my bodily desires, my bodily needs. Yes, yes, our, our bodily needs are natural and normal and part of being a human being. But he says we don't need to give in to them. Paul emphasizes that just because we can sleep around doesn't mean we should. In fact, Paul recognizes that God's law has a deeper purpose than just setting up yes and no lines. It's not just a a list of of commands that we have to follow or things that we have to do or that we cannot do. That God's law has a purpose behind it. That the spirit of the law is not in our external obedience. You see, God knows who we are as human beings and he knows what social scientists have, have since figured out that the more people you sleep around with, the less able you are to form intimacy with one person. God knew that that the more people you sleep around with, the more you are mastered by lust, mastered by your sexuality, the less happy you will be. God didn't give us rules so that we could follow the letter of the law or, or just throw it out but because God knows what we need and what is good for us. And Paul reminds us that that is because we belong to Christ. He reminds us that that what we do with our bodies not only affects our bodies, but it affects our spirit, it affects our soul. And that when we When we sleep with somebody, we are doing something with our soul and not just our bodies. Not only when we sleep with somebody, but when we engage in in other behaviors or simply observing other things, our, our souls are affected. And that we need to approach things remembering that we belong to Christ. We are members of Christ's body. And he points this out. He says, whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. It is being one with God in spirit through Christ that we find that we can follow God's law, not as strict adherence of the letter of the law, but as those who understand the spirit of the law. And that may, in fact, require breaking some human laws in order to follow the spirit of the law, in order to follow what Christ calls us to. Following the spirit of the law means listening not to those external things of the letter of the law, but the internal voice of the Holy Spirit within us. If we want to be the kind of people who follow what God calls us to do, who want to be disciples of Jesus. It isn't enough to memorize a set of rules. It isn't enough to to adhere to a list of do's and don'ts. In fact, if you read the Bible, you'll notice there are a lot of things that just aren't addressed. Nowhere in Scripture does it say whether or not it's okay to do heroin. We're not violating God's law as written by doing so. But it's not beneficial. 
We follow God's law by looking at our actions, looking at our decisions, not in terms of whether we are adhering to a list of do's and don'ts, but whether we are following the summation that Jesus gave us. That when we follow God's law, we do so loving the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving our neighbor as ourself. If our actions are motivated by selfish, selfish desires and ambition, that's not following the spirit of the law. But if our actions are motivated by a desire to glorify God, to love him, if they're motivated by a desire to, to lift others up and care for them and love them, then we are adhering to what the law is all about. Brothers and sisters, the spirit of the law is not always contained just in the letters. And we know the law as we know the one who gave it to us. So as we tra travel into some confusing and perilous times in our nation, where laws are, are being questioned by the left and the right, where violence is being proposed as a way to, to bring about justice or to prevent injustice, let us remember whose we are and our call to, to address injustice without violence, but with love and a desire to glorify the God who made us. Let us, when he, we hear his voice, do like Samuel and say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And we want to do what you want us to do. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen.